Hi and welcome to this next video tutorial. This is probably a video not for the complete beginner. Uh, it needs a, a little bit of knowledge in, in Photoshop but it could be quite easily followed you know if you've got that little bit of experience and basically if we look at this picture I want to tidy the background up. You can see that there's a, a white line in there which is a fence that's showing up. I want to get a bit more blur in the background and this works on these type of images that uh, where the subject is all in nicely in focus so basically we got this stump here and that's all nicely in focus uh, I'm not sure what setting I use on that it was f5.6 so we're doing well to get that so we've got that bit of blur in the background but it's not quite enough I want to give it a bit more punch but I'll basically set the settings in Lightroom uh, on the raw file to where I want them or the best I can get them and then we're going to use Photoshop now to to alter and make these alterations uh, they're going to be quite easy in this, in this circumstance but I say this really works well on an image where you've got that focus nice and sharp so I'm going to right click on the image edit in Photoshop which will open up Photoshop okay so now we have the image in Photoshop we've got the tools over on the left hand side and I'm just going to click double click the hand tool and what that does is just quick way of making the picture fit the screen Get rid of that box there there we go okay so what we're looking at is blurring out that background now to get the selection with this image it's going to be fairly easy if you've got the later version of uh, Photoshop that is because what we've now got on there I'm just going to go to the layers so I'll click on the layer there to bring up the layer palette first thing I always do is to right click and duplicate the layer so we're protecting the back image and now we're working on this second layer so just a complete duplicate and what we're going to do with this is to go to filter sorry we're going to select and then we're going to focus area And it takes a little while now and what it's doing is analyzing the picture and it's looking for those sharp areas and it's made a selection now you may not get the same view as that with this image I want a white background on there which is which it's already got but you've got these different views so you can select marching ants and all the different ones in this case I'm using on white just makes it easier to see okay you see that's almost a perfect selection I'm really happy with that it's probably got everything almost that I need so I'm just going to click on OK and straight away we've got a really good selection there now when I clicked on OK and if you've seen I also selected uh, there's a, a little box on the bottom there that allows you to select to create a new layer with a mask okay so I just missed that on the previous screen but you need to make sure you've made that selection from the bottom of the box when you click on OK so we've now eradicated the background altogether now what we want to do is to blur the background so I'm going to show the background again I'm just going to click on this copy there I'm going to leave the background the original background image I'm going to leave the eye off on that so we actually can't see that and what we're going to do is we're going to blur this background now the problem is with this and I see a lot of, lot of photographers uh, actually try this is we go to filter blur and we're going to use Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur sorry and when they blur the image you can see you've got this ghost effect coming around the bird because it's blurring the bird and it's giving this really false effect 
On the other hand, it's blurred out the fence, so it's, it's done what we want there, but it's still not what we what we actually want. So I'm just going to cancel that, and I'm going to show you how to to overcome this. So first of all, we're going to hide this top layer. I'm going to click on the eye there and hide that layer, and make sure we're working on this layer. We're going to use one of the blur, you know, you'll probably have the blur tool there on the toolbar. If you click on that, you can see three further selections. You've got the blur tool, the sharpen tool, and the smudge tool. And it's the smudge tool that we're going to use. Now, work slowly with the smudge tool. Uh, you can. We need a, a fairly large brush. In this case, I'm using a, a brush size of 200 pixels. So we can now, what I'm going to do is to push in the bird using the smudge tool. We've got the strength set on 88%. You probably want it around that. And I'm just going to get go around the bird and just bring it in. Same with the stump. Bring this leg of the rabbit in quite a bit there. And I can also shape the trees here just to the shape that I want. I can bring these trees up so we're not. This is going to be quite blurred, so you're not really going to notice this. It just allows us to edit the picture. So again, this side now. So this is not the type of thing you can do with every image. It depends on the image that you're using, but it works great with these pictures where you've got the subject nice and sharply in focus. Okay, well, just that bit there. We'll go with that. Let's try that. Bit more down there. That should be fine. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to apply that blur. So we go to blur, Gaussian blur. I want to blur it enough to, to really take out that fence. So we'll click on OK. And now what we do, we go back to our top image and we click back on the eye to show the layer. And you can now see we haven't got any ghost in effect around the bird whatsoever. We've got rid of that completely. And we've also put enough blur on there to take out the fence line. I'm still not happy with that. I just want to, I don't want to put a full sky in there. Some people would go to that extent, but what I do want to do is to give it a little bit more colour. So if we look at the layers again, I'm going to click on the background copy there. I'm going to apply a new layer. What I'm going to do with this layer is I'm going to select a sky colour. So I'm going to go to the, the colour picker and click on the top one. And I'm going to select a nice, not too, not too blue a colour. It's, it's a British picture, so we want a not not too bright blue, a bit of a grey in there. So something like that. And then for the bottom one, again, we're going to select blue, but we want a quite lighter blue. So something like that. Click on OK. And then we're going to use. The gradient tool. We make sure that it's on the linear gradient, which is the first of the buttons, and we make sure that it's set to foreground to background, which is the first box there. And then I'm going to drag from top to bottom. You can hold down the the shift key in that case, and then you see that it makes it jump into position, so you've got a nice straight line. Let go, and there's our sky colour. 
Now what I'm going to do with this is to change the mode of the layer. Now the mode at the moment is normal. This is the blending mode. I'm going to change that to multiply. I'm just going to lower the effect a little bit. Make it looking too false. But we just want to bring a little bit of blue into the sky. And then you can see now we're starting to get a nice looking image. Okay, I'm going to click on the top layer. There's something I want to do with this is just give it a bit more punch. I want to draw the eye into the actual subject. And to do that, we create a new layer. So on the icons at the bottom of the, the screen there, you will find one for a create a new layer. So we've got a new layer over the top. And on this layer, I'm going to use the elliptical marquee tool. So select that from the marquee tools. I'm going to put the cross in the top left corner, and you can see the cross. It's I'm going to get the two hairlines into the corner, not the point, but the two hairlines, so they're just touching the corner there. I'm going to hold down the mouse and drag down and get that in the same position on the other side of the bottom right and let go of the mouse. Try that a bit. So there's our selection. And actually you want the reverse of this. So to do that we go to select, inverse. And what we're going to do with this is to colour it in black. So. If we click on the default colours underneath the colour picker box there, that will change it to black and white. If you've got the colours in reverse, you can use this little boomerang there to change those around. And then we want the paint bucket tool. And we just click and select that one. Okay, so we do select that. Now it could be I had got a slight feather on that, so it's giving a soft edge. Doesn't matter whether you've got that or not, it won't make any difference. So I'll deselect that. And now what we're going to do is to apply a blur to this. So we go to filter, the Gaussian blur again. Not from the top because that will just apply the same effect as what we selected last. So we go to blur, Gaussian blur. We want this quite high in this case, something like that. So we're trying to create a vignette effect, but they have to be done properly. That looks horrible. So we're going to alter that now. We're going to go back to the layers and we're going to change the layer mode from normal to soft light. And now you can see and change the opacity to anything I want and I just want to bring it in a little bit just to give it that bit of a punch so it draws the eye into the subject. And you see now we've got an image that's blurred out the background without giving any ghost in effect around the bird or around the stump and we'll give it a bit of colour in the sky and all done really in a couple of minutes. To complete the image, you flatten the image. Get rid of the layers. And then we could save it as a JPEG or, or whatever. Okay, hope that's helped a little bit.